It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Elliot Haynes, associate editor of United Nations World. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Fuller Warren, Governor of the State of Florida. Governor Warren, our viewers, of course, uh, know you as one of the more controversial political figures in the South. Uh, they remember uh, a little uh, engagement that you had with uh, Senator Keefover during his investigation. And tonight I'm sure that our viewers would like some of your uh, expressions as to the political situation in Florida. Now first, sir, uh, we've had Governor Talmadge on this program uh, a few days ago and he told us his position. We've had certain other southern governors. What's your position in the present national campaign, sir? Mr. Huey, I am 100% plus for Stevenson and Sparkman. Well, now, uh, are you one of the radical governors in the South, or are you conservative? Where do you fit in this political firmament? Uh, Mr. Huey, I think you might appropriately and aptly describe me as a liberal conservative. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, it is a... Uh, a liberal, liberal conservative believe in the FEPC. Not a compulsory FEPC, uh, Mr. Haynes. We believe in the Constitution, as I believe all good Americans do, and as we read the Constitution, it doesn't give the federal government the power to pass an FEPC uh, that could be enforced with jail sentences. You're a but state's writer then, are you? Well, I don't know so much about that. I'm an American first, but I believe in treating everybody fair and right and giving everybody an equal opportunity to a job. Well, now, uh, do Mr. Stevenson's positions on those issues uh, altogether suit you, sir? Well, uh, they come nearer suiting me than most positions on that subject do. Including uh, General Eisenhower's? <laughs> Well, I can't tell just what his position is. He vacillates so and changes from day to day so that I can't keep up with it. Well, you know his latest position, Mr. Haynes? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, General Eisenhower <coughs> paid a widely publicized visit to your state recently. Uh, what was the effect of his trip there? Uh, well, it's hard to say, Mr. Huey. I've been in politics for 25 years, and about all that I've learned to do is to make a wild guess. So I don't pose as an expert or even a semi or quasi. I might be a pseudo expert, but he was well received there. A great many people turned out to see him and he was treated with that famous Florida hospitality and cordiality. The feeling is that he got more ho hospitality than he'll get votes down there. Do you think that also applies to uh, the effect that Jimmy Burns might have in his switch to Eisenhower? Well, Governor Burns is one of the most beloved and revered figures in the South. And uh, we have real affection for him in the South, but I doubt if any political leader's position in the South will greatly influence the votes of a great number of people in the South. Just about everybody in the South, as I suspect most of them are in the North and West, do their own voting, their independence when it comes to casting a vote. You have a lot of Republicans in Florida, don't you, Governor? Yes, sir. We've had a very large Republican infiltration into Florida in recent years, and I may say we've welcomed them because nearly all of them are solvent and well-heeled and uh, <laughs> capable of doing a whole lot to develop our state. They make fine citizens, but very, you might say, unsatisfactory voters. <clears throat> well, sir, now about Florida and uh, has the industrialization proceeded as fast in Florida as it has in other states? Very, very fast, Mr. Huey. For many years, we were long on tourism and agriculture, but short on industrialization. But under the beneficent policies of Roosevelt, uh, we have proceeded rapidly in the industrialization of Florida. Our industry is fast moving up alongside our agriculture and our tourism. Well, now, about tourism, uh, how important is tourism to the economy of Florida? Uh, Mr. Huey, it is n almost all important. The people of Florida 
have a total annual income of about three and a half billion dollars. About one billion of those three and a half billion dollars is derived from tourism. So you can see that about one out of every three and a half dollars we take in comes from these splendid, fine, affluent people from other states who come to Florida for rest, relaxation, and reinvigoration. And they, al they also come for uh, divorces, don't they, Governor? Well, a few of them come down for marital liberation, but, uh, <laughs> uh, of course, well, that is one of the many, uh, you might say, facets of Florida's charm. Well, uh, is Florida able to compete with such states as Arkansas and Nevada and, and divorces? Uh, Mr. Huey, we are a little uh, bit handicapped. They have a, I believe, a six day, a six day, I mean six weeks residence requirement in those two states, and you have to live in Florida for the full period of 90 days before you can file a divorce suit. That means you make more money from each divorced uh, person, though. L yes, the uh, longer we keep them there, the more <laughs> they spend there, of course, but I believe it's money well spent because they get a new lease on life and recapture a whole lot of lost youth while they're down there, and, and just every way they're benefited and improved. It's the nearest thing to going to paradise that can be achieved without dying, Mr. Gambling, uh, is gambling included in, the, in that, Governor? No, sir. We have suppressed gambling in Florida almost completely for more than 50 years. It had operated just about as openly there as uh, filling stations, but in the last three or four years, we have just about suppressed illegal gambling. We have uh, gambling, a paramutual gambling at the horse tracks, the dog tracks, and at High Lie, but in Florida now, uh, you run a serious risk if you get in a dice game or a card game where there's any money on it. You wouldn't well, say that the Senator Kefover was responsible for that change, would you? Uh, he came down there and did a lot of shouting and hollering and screaming and bellering about it after we had uh, made a good start towards suppressing it. Uh, he is was using a special Senate committee for the purpose of promoting himself for president, and he just came down, got a lot of headlines, and did a lot of tub thumping and uh, wow. noise making down there, Mr. Haynes. Well, I was it was Senator Kefauver, I believe, uh, charged that uh, some of those people around Miami were good friends of yours who were involved in that gambling. Uh, Mr. Huey. A man who runs for office is a good friend to everybody, and let him be a good friend to him. Uh, the fact is that under my administration, uh, illegal gambling in Florida has been suppressed for the first time in more than 50 years. It was introduced into Florida in the 80s, as I recall it, and it had run almost without molestation for all that time. But under my administration, we have practically suppressed illegal gambling. We have plenty of legal yeah. paramutual gambling. Governor, I wonder why that um, side of the question didn't appear more plainly in the newspapers around the country. Well, uh, Senator Kefauver and his accomplices were seeing that it didn't. They were bringing out what evidence they wanted to bring out and suppressing what evidence they didn't want to come out. He was running for president. He was not uh, making a bona fide investigation, Mr. Haynes. Now, sir, since uh, tourism, to come back to that subject, since tourists uh, contribute about one-third of the total income of Florida, uh, is one of your uh, pleasures and uh, duties, perhaps, to uh, invite people there? Have you been on a tour, for instance? Uh, yes, sir. I have just covered 10 of the finest of the 48 states, uh, with the sole exception of Florida, which, of course, stands at the top of the list by any standard or measurement. But I have just come back from a tour of those 10 states, inviting everybody in those states who hasn't already been to Florida to come, and those who've already been there to come back. And I should at this time like to invite every person who is honoring us by listening in or looking in on this program, and I understand it's one of the most popular programs in the Western world, I should like <laughs> to invite every one of them to come to Florida. We have about five million annual visitors to Florida, but we've got room for plenty more Governor, down there. Governor, just uh, how many days in the year does the sun shine in Florida? <laughs> well, uh, its schedule is 365 days. It misses the schedule once in a while, Mr. Haynes, but in St. Petersburg, as you know, a publisher gave away his paper every day in the year that the sun didn't shine a little bit some of the day. Is he still in business? He's still in <laughs> business and going strong, yes, sir. He's I just about as in good a shape as uh, the Longines watches are. <laughs> well, 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 Governor, to come back to uh, the national political scene, uh, which our viewers are particularly interested, uh, 
Just uh, how do you believe that the election will go on November the 4th, 1952? Uh, Mr. Huey, you flatter me by asking me for what appears to be an opinion of mine. You appear to be asking me for an opinion of mine. As I've said, I've been in the politics on the mostly on the outer fringes of it for about 25 years. Uh, more than half of my lifetime, and all I can do is make a guess, and they're usually wild guesses. But I'll make a wild guess and say, in answer to your question, that the Republicans in 1952 A.D. will be defeated worse than they've been since 1936 A.D. Yeah. Remember, they carried two states then. You think Florida will be in the Democratic column? Yes, sir, I do, and I'd like to give you, Mr. Haynes, a few of my reasons for believing that. In Florida, we have approximately 1,118,000 registered Democrats, with a big D, I mean. And we have about 88,000 Republicans and about 5,000 independents. I don't believe that the most credulous and naive man can believe that there'll be enough desertions among those 1,118,000 Democrats to give the Republicans a victory. We got a little taste of Republicanism in 1928, and we never have recovered from it in Florida, Mr. Haynes. We got another little taste of it in 1950, when one of our counties, Pinellas County, went Republican, and the pe people are still weeping over it, almost. And uh, we just can't take the panics that seems to go with Republicanism. We don't well, like hard times. We love prosperity down there, and we've got it under the Democrats. Well, Governor, I'm sure that our viewers have very much appreciated seeing you tonight, and thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ewing. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Elliot Haynes. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Fuller Warren, Governor of the State of Florida. It's World Series time again, the best days of the year for baseball fans. And this year again, the World Series is Longine time. Yes, all the umpires of both American and National Baseball Leagues use Longine watches exclusively for timing all the games, including the World Series. Truly, the most honored watch in the world of sport is Longine, the world's most honored watch. The only watch in history ever to win 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. That is why, throughout the world, no other name on a watch carries the prestige of Longine, the world's most honored watch in sport. The watch of first choice with discriminating people the world over. And yet do you know that you may buy and own or proudly give a Longine watch for as little as $71.50. Longine, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company since 1866 maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world's honored Longine. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longine and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Enjoy the Jackie Gleason Show on the CBS Television Network.